Hey, this is Jack Dalton. I'm still in South Africa with my fiance Roz Ho. We spent a wonderful day today exploring the area of Cape Town at the bottom of the continent of Africa. Behind us you can see Table Mountain on our right and Signal Hill on our left, uh, both, of which will, both of which dominate the city of um, Cape Town. Uh, giving it one of those beautiful landscapes or, or sightings of a city in the world, don't you think, Roz? Oh yeah, definitely. When we were coming back, we were out on a boat this morning going to Robbins Island, and on the way back, you could, the sun came out and you could clearly see Table Mountain as the backdrop of Cape Town. It was just beautiful. It's kind of windy here. The winds kicked up a bit in the early evening, so I think we need to project as much as possible, Roz. But yeah, this morning we went on a, a, cru a cruise, an open sea voyage, so to speak. Well, it was very stormy. It is the Atlantic Ocean, after all. Yeah, it took us about a half hour to 40 minutes to get from Cape Town to Robben Island. And Robben Island is famous, of course, for having uh, been the site of a, a prison uh, where they interred, uh, in particular, political prisoners, the most famous of whom was Nelson Mandela who was there for 18 years, I believe. That's right. Uh, moved back to the mainland, a prison on the mainland, in 1982. And when we were there, we actually saw the cell block and indeed the very cell, the Spartan cell in which Nelson Mandela spent his 18 years on yeah. Robben Island. Yes, it was a very small area. What did they tell us? It was two meters by three meters or something? Something like that. Or very small. Yeah. Or actually, it felt smaller than yeah, that. I think it, it was, I think it was two meters by two meters. And it had no bed. He slept on a mat on the stone floor. Um, there were hardly any other things inside the room other than this mat. Well, there's a bucket a bu for a your necessities and then a very tiny table. Uh, but it was almost devoid of any other furnishings than that. I think it was devoid of any other furnishings yeah, than that. And, and apparently they, there, were, there were bars on the window but no glass. So even during the winter when it was raining it was open to the elements. Yeah, in fact the uh, uh, guide who actually was a political prisoner on the island told us that they gave them three blankets, one to fold into a pillow, one to use as some kind of a sheet, and only one blanket even during the winter months. Yeah, you know, Roz, I told you that I don't know how, how he survived or anyone could survive uh, one year, much less 18 years under those conditions, but he did miraculously. Then uh, this afternoon, after uh, having uh, toured Robin Island and come back across the, uh, the water, the Atlantic, to Cape Town proper. We had a wonderful lunch at a restaurant, a Muslim restaurant, that specialized in Cape Malay, Malay cuisine, one of the uh, cuisines that Cape Town is associated with, uh, a cuisine that's heavily influenced by Indian and Southeast Asian foods and, and dishes. It was delicious. Yeah, it was really fantastic. It was really unique, too, I thought. We've eaten all kinds of Asian food in South Asia, Southeast Asia, and East Asia, but I think this was very distinctive. Yes, it was, and, uh, with, but with a lot of familiar spices and familiar overtones, and yet quite different. And after we had a Cape Malay lunch at a Muslim restaurant, uh, we proceeded to explore the Muslim Quarter, which is known as the Bokap. And the Bokop is located, the Muslim Quarter is located on the flanks of Signal Hill, which is just behind me to the left. You can perhaps see a bright yellow building at the, uh, at the up, on the upper flanks of Signal Hill. Well, the Muslim Quarter is just below that, and it's characterized by these brightly colored uh, Dutch-style and Georgian-style homes. Uh, painted in pastels of orange and pink well, and green. In some cases they were actually quite bright. Yeah. Fuchsias and orange and there was a lime green house and bright blues. It was very colorful, very picturesque. Which it, is probably in stark contrast to the history of the area where they, these people were brought in as slaves by the Dutch. Yeah, the, the uh, people who inhabited the Muslim quarter, the Muslims, were brought in by the Dutch and the 16th and 17th centuries, primarily from Sri Lanka, Africa, South Asia, um, and some other places. And they established a community ultimately in a particular part of Cape Town, which is now known as the Bokop. 
and it's still predominantly Muslim, 70% Muslim. We uh, toured a mosque, the oldest mosque in uh, South Africa, indeed said to be the oldest mosque in the Southern Hemisphere. I think it was founded in 1793. Still in operation, it's quite extraordinary. We went inside just after the, uh, one of the daily prayer sessions uh, and listened to the call to prayer before that. Um, it was a wonderful, unique Muslim area, unlike any other Muslim area I think we've ever visited in the world. Yeah, that's quite true. And now we're back at the waterfront in our hotel, the Cape Grace Hotel, the luxurious Cape Grace Hotel, making plans for dinner and looking forward to tomorrow when we're going to do something quite interesting as well. Yeah, I, I'm looking forward to, uh, we're going to drive down to uh, Cape of Good Hope and uh, Cape Point. Uh, one thing before we leave the Muslim area I yes. wanted to point out was that uh, I did not realize that actually the Dutch um, did not allow them to uh, they did not allow the, uh, the Muslim. Muslim, yeah Muslims to practice their faith essentially oh it was only until the British takeover in the beginning of the 19th century that the Muslims could openly practice their faith right. in Cape Town but yet they kept their faith alive for you know over a hundred years before that happened even though they were repressed by the Dutch in the practice of their religion. You know, so much history of repression and oppression in this city, but now that's all changed and it's got a wonderfully positive, upbeat, dynamic atmosphere. Yeah. Well, as you said, tomorrow we're going to proceed um, south of here, down the Cape Peninsula, making our way ultimately to Cape Point, the Cape of Good Hope, the bottom of the continent of Africa, and we're very excited to be going there. Yeah, I, I think we're going to see some uh, jackass penguins, now known as African penguins, apparently, for politically correct reasons. They're no longer called jackass penguins. Yeah, the Cape Peninsula has penguins, believe it or not, but it's it, the biome in the Cape, on the Cape Peninsula is one of the most diverse and unique in the world. So we're going to see many interesting types of flora and fauna when we tour that area tomorrow and perhaps with some wine tasting thrown in if we have time and hopefully we might even catch a glimpse of the right whales yeah this is the one of the whale seasons here and right whales are passing by and they say we should expect to see some tomorrow so um, that's going to be great you know Ross my entire life I've, I've always dreamed about going to the Cape of Good Hope and now tomorrow we're going to do that. I know, that. me too. I'm really looking forward to that. So we'll be focusing more on the flora and fauna and the geology tomorrow. Yeah, so another great day concluded in South Africa and another one coming up tomorrow. Thanks a lot, Roz. Bye-bye.